Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking him with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and he prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us not be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. When we see Jesus in this garden, we see him at his most vulnerable. And yet we see him at his most inspirational. We see him at his most inspiring, even though he's at his weakest. Even though we want you to be in the garden tonight, can I take you to the end of this experience? And in John's gospel, at the end of this experience in the garden, we see Jesus knowing some real strengths from surrendering. And tonight, in our world that tries to be first and tries to be strong and, and tries to stand up, Actually, you know, surrender does you good. For Jesus, he said in John chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Knowing what was about to happen, then Jesus spoke. When you surrender, you get to know God's will. It's an amazing thing. And, and people burst in the garden at the end of this. And they said, are you Jesus of Nazareth? And he said, I am. And they all fell backwards. When you surrender, you know your own identity. You stop trying to be another person. But when you surrender and you connect with God, for those of you who here might be thinking, what are these Christians about? Actually, your identity becomes a lot clearer to you. At the end of the garden experience, as they were trying to take him away, Jesus said, let all these others go. He still had other people's interests in his heart. And when you surrender, you find it much easier to care for people. You find it much easier to give what they need because you're in a surrendered place. You see, the world teaches us that surrender is bad for you, but actually it makes you a larger person. So tonight I want to teach you some secrets of surrender. And actually, the other effect, according to John's gospel, is that Jesus, having said a dangerous prayer, Father, can you take this cup from me? Actually, in John's Gospel, at the end, he says, 
shall I not drink this cup? In other words, he was saying, I'm not just accepting God's will or I'm not just, I'm not just going along with it because I have to. Have you ever met people who they comply, but it's not really in their heart? But you know, with Jesus, he said, no, I'm going to drink this. And what surrender does is instead of you begrudgingly accepting what God's will is for your life, you embrace it and love it and go with it. So tonight, it's really important we learn some secrets, some insights into surrender as we go into this Easter season. Everybody who might be connecting with us online right now, we want to say to you, Jesus really loves you. And tonight, if you're a guest amongst us, we welcome you. And as we talk about surrender, you know deeply within your heart that when you give yourself to the right thing, it just does you good. For those of you who've been in hospital, and even though that's a terrible experience, you know that when you surrender to the treatment, that actually it's making you better. The first insight about surrender is this, and it was read to us earlier that Jesus prayed and said, pray that you don't fall into temptation. And in the garden, and about surrender, there's always a temptation never to give in and to always be tempted to look for your self-interest or self-preservation. And if you'll just resist that temptation, if you'll pause and say, well, maybe if I give in, if I submit to God and I stop trying to preserve everything about me and give in, and maybe things will go right for me. It's really important that you understand that this temptation to fight for your own interests is something that eventually saps all your strength. One of the apostles who was in the garden, in fact, he was the one who grabbed a sword and cut off a servant's ear and Jesus said, come on, man, just let me stick the ear back on. But Peter wrote later on, in the same way you who are younger, submit to yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand so that he may lift you up at the proper time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Surrender is always surrounded by temptation. Temptation to fight it. And tonight, you're going to be tempted to say, that's okay, but what about, drop the what about and say, God, I'm going with you. Amen, church? This garden experience also teaches us that every upset that we have and every emotion that we have should be surrounded by prayer. Jesus said, my soul is sorrowful for, to death. You know, one way to heal that some, some of those emotions that, that are draining everything from you is to surround them in prayer. And that's what Jesus did. He said, my soul is so sorrowful for death. And when we're emotionally distressed, it's a simple lesson, but it's a lesson of surrender. First lesson is you'll always be tempted not to surrender. But the second lesson is surround all your feelings with prayer. The psalmist said, in my distress, I cried to the Lord. Not after my distress, but in my distress. I cried to the Lord. I surrounded all my emotions to prayer. I cried out for help and from his temple he heard me. Surround your emotions in prayer. 
Some of you have come tonight and you're troubled. If you would bathe that trouble in prayer, you will find that those emotions even out. Let me talk to you as friends and as people who love each other and as people who are in relationship with each other. And under my ministry, we'll always, always go for the relational rather than just the institutional. We need to be friends. Amen. But can I say to you that the third insight about surrender is friends will only take you so far. They can encourage you. They can bless you. They can counsel you. But with Jesus here, he said, friends, come and pray with me in the garden. And then he took three further aside and said, Peter, James and John, come and pray with me. My soul is being overwhelmed. And they went to pray with him. But then he had to go a little further and it was him on his own. And I want to say to you tonight that as much as we value friends, eventually, as far as surrender goes, it's going to be you with Jesus and yourself and it's going to be your choice. And some of the reasons that you have tonight why your life is where it's at, yeah, of course it's been affected by others. Of course it has. But one of the great lessons that we have is it comes down to if you will say, not my will, but yours. You. Friends will only take you so far. Why don't you just breathe that prayer just to yourself right now? But not my will, yours. You see, because I want to try and point something out to you, and I know I really appreciate you kind of being flexible tonight and doing church in the round and kind of thinking it's a little okay. We really appreciate that. Because you know we know where you sit every single week. You know that, don't we? And I know that you're not sitting in the place that you normally sit. And I know that's made you really, like, disorientated. You don't know whether you're at the back or the front, do you? Thank you for doing something different. I know Pastor Ron has been praying for months he could get on the stage and we've got him there now. But that's okay. But what I want to teach you is this. This is really important. Surrender is actually a dialogue. It's a dialogue between you and God. It's a conversation between you and God. It, like I said earlier, it's not one of those things. Have you ever met those people where it's this, well, I'm complying, but I'm not surrendered. Surrender is not compliance. Surrender is a very deep and ever deepening dialogue between you and God. And let me show you something from the scriptures that you might not have seen. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, there's a first ask by Jesus. In this garden, he prays this prayer three times. On the first time that he prays it, it says, going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed this. Now listen to this phrase really carefully. If it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. But, as, but not as I will, but as you will. That's the first conversation. Father, 
if it is possible, I'm putting it out there to see if it's a possibility. And then he goes back to the disciples and comes back again. And then verse 42, there's a shift in emphasis. I want you to really notice it. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away from me, I drink it, your will be done. Do you see the difference? If it is possible, God, if there's any hope, take it away. And then after a bit of a conversation, he's saying, well, it's not possible. He's actually deepened in his surrender. You see, surrender is an ever-deepening conversation between you and God. It's a, it's a conversation where you wrestle with him it's the shift in the dialogue. This wrestling in prayer makes our minds bigger. Daniel did it in the Old Testament. He's, in fact, in Daniel 9, it says when he fasted, prayed and confessed and wrestled with God. It was only after he'd done that that an, that an angel shows up and shows him what the future is like. You see, you can't get to the revelation bit unless you have the wrestling bit. Do you want me to say that again? You're not going to get to the revelation bit unless you have the wrestling bit. And with Jesus here, he says, if it is possible, and then he was saying, well, if it's not possible, I still want your will. Can I ask you tonight, do you need to have an honest conversation with God? Is there an area in your life where you're wrestling with God or even fighting with God? And do you need to have an honest conversation with Him where you finally go, okay, God, let's talk about this. I need to tell you this and I need to get your will on this. Because surrender is always a conversation. God never says, just do it. He always says, let me get your heart so that you want to do it. A dialogue with God will lead you to the Father's heart. Do you notice that in Mark's version of this story, he says, Abba, Father, if it's possible, He's saying, Daddy. You see, for those of you who perhaps might be guests tonight, or those of you watching online, when we talk about God, we mean a perfect father, the father that we all never had, the perfect dad. And all surrender doesn't lead us to this big, mighty, angry God. All this surrender leads us to the father who loves his children, always leads us to the Father's heart. So let me share four secrets with you tonight of surrender. The first one is, you're gonna be tempted not to, and you have to resist. The, the second secret of surrender will always be that you have to take those emotions that you feel and surround them in prayer. The first, the third secret is your friends will only take you so far and as much as we love our relationships and we all need those things, there comes a time when you have to say, it's me and you, God. And the last secret or insight into surrender is it's always a conversation. It's always a dialogue where you go deeper and deeper and deeper. So I want to say to you, talk to him. I wonder if you just lift your hand with me right now and just talk to him. Just in your own life, for your own, or just in your own heart. You may not 
want to lift your hand, but talk to him. Because surrender costs you. It will cost you something emotionally. It costs you something physically. Jesus sweat drops of blood here. But here's what I want to say to you. Jesus looked past the garden. He looked past the hill that Kathy's going to talk about on Friday. And he looked even past the tomb. And the Bible says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God. We may be in the garden, but there is a throne waiting. You may be in a place of, I don't know whether to surrender, but there is a crown waiting for you. Church, there's a crown waiting for you. There are many crowns waiting for you. You may cast them down, but there is a great reward waiting for you. In your struggle against sin, you've not resisted to the shedding of blood. Learn this lesson. Look past this immediate challenge that you have to the ultimate purpose that God is doing. 